It is said that the past creates the present and disfigures the future. That may not always be necessarily so, but given the habits of the criminal fraternity, it is a dictum worth bearing in mind, as is the Latin phrase, latit anguis in herba. There is a snake hidden in the grass. So, in matters of murder, strong footwear is essential. Oh, watch where you're going, boy! I'm sorry, Mr. Phillips. Oh, whew. busy tonight. Uh, Friday always is. Lots of money to wager. Service here! Coming, sir! Old fool, showing off in front of those two painted tarts. Yeah, he'll be wiser in the morning. And Paula. <laughs> <laughs> How's that pair in the private room? Oh, all right. The bearded fella sank two bottles. Well, then he won't be winning much, will he? Huh? <laughs> what? Oh, Lord! Oh, what is it about Friday night? Eh? Come on! Oh, Lord! The bearded fella! Oh, looks like he drew first but forgot to fire, eh? Are you all right, sir? The, the window! Oh, yeah. Nipped out here! Oh, there he goes! Hey! I've got him! I've got him! Give a hand here, he's... Oh. Oh. Right, oh. I'll take the revolver. Oh. Well, would you believe it? The police have actually caught somebody. Oh. Mind you, mm. if he hadn't tripped over that pile of rubbish. They've got him, sir. Under arrest. Serves him right. <laughs> Serves him... Oh, Lord. Well, at least he died happy. The Three Gary Debs by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Dramatised for radio by David Ashton. With Clive Medicine as Sherlock Holmes and Michael Williams as Dr John Watson. And featuring Lou Hirsch as John Gary Deb and James Taylor as Nathan Gary Deb. The Three Gary Debs. A rare event to witness. Watson, bursting into song. Oh, hardly bursting, Holmes. Nonetheless, to what do we owe this unexpected lyricism? Nothing. <coughs> Nothing at all. Huh? Early summer, perhaps the sap rising. Oh, don't think so. Yeah. Oh, it may be rising somewhere. The forecast. It's for a fine day. Yes, and lovers, no doubt, will be gambling in the park. I believe it's lambs that gamble. Yes, and lovers? Hmm? Look, I suppose. Whatever. I'm glad to see that you have finally risen. Like the sap. Ah, it's like the sap. I may take it that your sojourn in bed is over. Ah, you know my habits, Watson. When I have nothing to do, I quite often do nothing. Uh, I wondered if you might be pondering the wisdom of your decision to refuse the knighthood. No, I have not. Yeah. Busy. Sir Sherlock Holmes. Oh, it has a fine ring. I need no honour to serve my country, Watson. And the reason for my Lazarus-like arising is contained in the letter which I received this very morning. A case? Yes, possibly, possibly, possibly. Mm. Mm. Ah, yes. Nothing like coffee to stimulate the brain cells. Have you ever come across the name Gary Deb? No, can't say I have. Well, if you can lay your hand on a Garideb, there's a deal of money in it for you, my friend. Can you get this thing to go any faster? Not unless I kill yours, sir. Huh? How about you half kill it? <laughs> well, do your best, my man, because time is of the essence. Yes, indeed. Time is of the essence. <laughs> Here we are, Holmes, in the directory. Only the one, but here it is. Let me see. Uh, oh, yes. 
Nathan Garadeb, 136 Little Ryder Street. <clears throat> Sorry to disappoint you, Watson, but that man's the writer of my letter. You want another to match him. Yes? A gentleman to see you, sir. His card. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, yes. Please show him up. Very good, sir. Watson? Mm, thank you. John Garadeb. Counselor at Law, Kansas, USA. They're coming out of the woodwork. Ah, but this gentleman is also in the plot already. You know, I did not expect to see him quite so soon. Not quite so soon. Mr. Holmes, very like your pictures, I must say, sir. Oh, and you must be Watson. Dr. Watson. John Garadab, American born and bred, at your service, sirs. <laughs> I believe you may have had a letter, Mr. Holmes, for my namesake, Nathan. Indeed. But pray, pray sit down. We have much to discuss. Please. Thank you. I, I thank you, sir. Most hospitable. <clears throat> yes, born and bred, but surely you've been in this country for some time. Why say that, Mr. Holmes? The shoulder cut of your coat, the toes of your boots, the whole outfit is English, is it not? Oh, yes, one of your little tricks, eh? Well, business recently brought me here, so my outfit, as you say, is nearly all London, but I guess we didn't meet to discuss the cut of my socks. Time is of the essence, Mr. Holmes. Can we get down to business? Patience, sir. Tell me, why did Mr. Nathan Garadeb not come here with you? Why did he ever drag you into it at all? Professional business between two gentlemen and one needs calling a detective. Oh, no reflection on you, I'm sure, Mr. Garadeb. Simply zeal on his part to gain an end which is equally vital to both of you. You may have need of special information. I have access to that sort of thing. It was natural that he should apply to me. Oh, well, if you put it like that... That's exactly how I put it. It's just that when he told me, I felt as if my honour had been put in question, and I... I felt real bad about it, so I came right away to put you straight. And in order to put us straight, perhaps we had better have a clear account of the affair from your own lips, as it were. My friend Watson here knows nothing of the details. Need he know? We usually work together. Two heads, you know. Beg pardon? Being better than one. <clears throat> ah, yes, right. Uh, we have that saying, too. Uh, OK, I'll keep it short and simple if I can. If you came from Kansas, Mr. Holmes, you would know of Alexander Hamilton Garadeb. Made his money in real estate, and then in the wheat pit of Chicago. He was rich beyond your wildest dreams. A sort of Croesus in Kansas. Maybe. He took a great pride in the queerness and singularity of his name, and like me, he had neither kith nor kin. I was at law in Topeka when we met up, and he was tickled pink to find another one of the same. Find me some more, says he. You be a lawyer, you search. I told him I had better things to do than go hiking around the world on a Garadeb hunt. Nonetheless, said he, that is exactly what you will do if things work out as I plan. <laughs> there was a powerful lot of meaning to those words, as I was soon to discover, for he died within a year of saying them, and he left a will behind. <laughs> it was the queerest will I have ever set eyes on. The property in Kansas is to be divided into three parts, and providing that three male adult Garadebs can be found and properly attested, they will inherit <laughs> five... Five million dollars. According to the American, five million each. How much is that in pounds, Mrs. Saunders? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Garadab. Now, will you please eat up your boiled eggs? Sir? No, I'm far too. He gave up his job, you know, the American, to search the world. But no success until me, Nathan Garadab. All we need is one. One more. Just one more. Ah, why don't I have any brothers? I'm sure I don't know, sir. Shall I clear away the breakfast things, then? Yes, uh, be careful on, on the carpet there, see? Uh, yes, I can see, sir. A mess. Fossilif calcifications, Mrs. Saunders, my fossils. And I haven't finished with their reordering. Essential. Absolutely essential. Essential indeed. Oh, think of what I could do. My collection, my life's work. Five million. <laughs> he's a strange old coot, but he's a Garadab. Mm, the only one in the directory. Where I found him, that's right. So we have a vacancy, Mr. Holmes. A five million dollar vacancy. If you can help fill it, we'll pay any charges. I assume you've advertised in the agony columns of the newspapers, etc. Oh, uh, yes, of course. No replies. None at all? Not a thing. Tell me. What do you think of all this, Watson? Hmm. A most curious problem. And one to which I shall devote the requisite attention. By the way, Mr. Garadab, how strange that you should come from Topeka. I had a correspondent there. It's dead now, lad. Dr. Lysander Starr. Do you remember him, Watson? 
Uh, oh, yes, clearly. He was the mayor there in 1890, I believe. Did you ever cross paths? Of course, good old Dr. Starr. In Topeka, his name is still honoured, Mr. Holmes. Well, much to do, a little time to do it, and I'll say goodbye to you now, gentlemen. I must on with my search. Uh, perhaps we may report any progress to each other within a day or two. Uh, I bid you good day. Uh, good day to one and all. <laughs> good day. Good day to one and all. Well, I sent a star, eh? Yes, I wondered if you'd recognize the name. Uh, take away an R and add a K to the second name, and you have Lysander Stark. From the adventure of the engineer's a thumb. A murderer, a counterfeiter, and certainly no mayor of Topeka. <laughs> Touch this Garadeb fellow where you will. He is false. There have been no advertisements in the agony columns. You know I miss nothing there. And did you notice his coat? Well, as you remarked, English cut. Frayed at the elbow and trousers bagged at the knee with at least a year's wear, and yet by his own account he's a provincial American recently landed in London. The rest is, no doubt, a rigmarole of lies. What's his game, then? I don't know. But behind that chubby exterior, I sense a shrewd and possibly dangerous man. Hmm. I think it's time to ring up and make an appointment with our other correspondent to see if he's fraudulent also. Mr Nathan Garadeb. Nathan... Wasn't he a prophet in the Bible? Well, there I bow to your superior knowledge, Watson. <laughs> well, that makes a nice change. Hmm. Uh, yes, can you get me Paddington 1314, please? Thank you. Yes, we have another little saying, Mr. Garadeb. Truth, like murder, will out. Come and get it. I will not. Then you shan't have it. Give me back my hat. All right. Here. Come on. Mm. No tricks now. On my honour. Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh, let me go. You promised no tricks. This isn't a trick. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> oh, no, don't. Those men are watching. I'll let them, miserable-looking pair. Cheer them up a bit. <laughs> oh, come here. Courting couples remind me of nothing more nor less than pigeons. The male puffs out his chest and the female runs round in circles. Yes, it's just part of life, Holmes. Not a bad part, either. To be in love is to lose one's individuality. One merely becomes subsumed into nature's biological imperatives. There's more to it than that. Is there? Enlighten me. Ah, warmth, companionship, fragrance. Fragrance? <laughs> Women... Oh, fragrant. So's a chestnut blossom, but one needn't marry it. Ah. I wonder if those two cooing doves realise that just across the road from them is where the gallows used to put on its little exhibitions. <laughs> the Tyburn Tree. Notice the nameplate, how discoloured it is. Mm. Been there quite a time, I'd say. Uh, so Garadeb would seem to be his real name, at any rate. Ah, Mrs Saunders? Yes? We spoke on the telephone. My name is Holmes. Oh, yes, Mr Garadeb is expecting you. Come in, if you please, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. When I rang, you said Mr Garadeb was asleep. Well, yes, an afternoon nap. All this excitation has tired him. He tires easily, I'm afraid. How long have you been in his employ? Well, nearly five years. Ah, quite a time, then. I'm a widow, sir. Time means little to me. Not much fragrance there, Watson. Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, please, please come in. Welcome to my humble... Uh, thank you, Mrs. Saunders. Yes, sir. Come in, gentlemen. Uh, uh, do be careful, your feet. The fossil's not quite finished yet. Not finished? Categorising. Ah, oh, I see. Are these skulls real? No plaster, unfortunately. Uh, the real ones, well, such as uh, Neanderthal there, yes. Hard to come by, eh? <laughs> Hard to come by. Dr Watson <laughs> here has a professional interest in bones. Oh, from the Paleolithic period, perhaps? Um, perhaps. Ah, now this may interest you, Mr Holmes. Mm -hmm. The coin here. Just cleaned it up. Let me see. Oh, yes. Syracusan. 
Oh, the best style. Some prefer the Alexandrian school, but I am of the opinion... Oh, please sit down, gentlemen. Uh, uh, the Japanese vase, Dr. Watson, mm. it can go uh, more somewhere. Oh, yes. Perhaps <laughs> no. over here. No, uh, what was I the opinion of? I've no idea. Mm. Uh, you collect insects as well? Yes, bees, butterflies, spiders, all sorts. Yes, they're all beautifully mounted. Indeed, a labour of love. Mm. <laughs> yes, even bumblebees. <laughs> yeah, I think I know this fellow. Yes, Bombus Alpinus? Yes, from Scandinavia. Yeah. Must have been freezing, poor chap. Yes, this one, this one. <laughs> yes, this one, the arch enemy of the rose. Uh, the leaf cutter bee. Uh, Megacaile centuncularis. Well hmm. done. I didn't know you were an expert on bees, Holmes. I have a passing knowledge. Well, <laughs> please, sit, sit. Ah, you see before you my little interests. My doctor lectures me about never going out, but I hate to leave them. You never leave here? Seldom. Quiet life. So this news came as a tremendous shock. Pleasant, but tremendous. One to find. One more Gary Deb. Indeed. I have no male relatives, unfortunately. Females are disqualified. But there must be someone somewhere. I heard that you handle strange cases, Mr. Holmes. That's why I sent to you. Can you help me? We shall see. So much on the market I am unable to purchase for want of a few hundred pounds. Think what I could do with five million dollars. Why, I could have the basis of a national collection. National! Mm, this um, American gentleman, mm, up to this week, you were unaware of his existence. Mm, hmm? Yes, till last Tuesday. Oh, he came bouncing in here like a rubber ball. <laughs> yes, that's just about describes him. <laughs> Has he asked for any money from you? No. Never. You see no possible object he has in view? None, except for what he states. Are there any items of great value in here? Oh, dear me, no. It's a good collection, but not a valuable one. So you have no fear of burglars? Not the least. How long have you been in these rooms? Almost five years. Uh, Mr. Garadeb. Uh, Mr. Garadeb. Great news, me? sir. Hmm? You are a rich man. Hmm? He's here, sir. Uh, my congratulations. What? Uh, th th thank you, Mrs. Saunders. <coughs> Beg your pardon. And Mr. Holmes, <laughs> sorry to have put you to the trouble. Read this. Read this and rejoice. Watson, will you do the honours? Certainly. Howard Garadeb. Oh. Note the name. Constructor of agricultural machinery, binders, reapers, hand ploughs, buckboards, and all other appliances. Estimates for artesian wells apply to royal buildings, Aston. Aston, Birmingham. Howard, Gary Deb. Glorious! That's the place. I opened up an inquiry there and was sent this advertisement from the local paper. Mm. I have telegraphed the man and told him to expect you, Mr. Nathan, by tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock. Me? Why me? I appeal to you, gentlemen. Is it not the wise course? Who would believe me, a wandering American with a fantastic tale? Indeed. Whereas you, sir, <laughs> British through and through, solid reference. He's bound to take notice. But, uh, Besides, I, uh, time is of the essence. I have much to do tomorrow. Kansas must be informed. Wheels must be set in motion. If there's any problems, Mr. Nathan, I will follow you up. I give you my word. But I've not made such a journey in years. I have figured your connections. You have to leave here by noontime. All you have to do is see the man, explain the matter, and get a sworn affidavit of his existence. <laughs> Simple. But Birmingham... Well, it's way up in the Midlands, isn't it? I mean, the Midlands. By the Lord! I've come all the way from the heartland of America. It is surely little enough for you to go a few hundred miles to push this matter through. Oh. Oh. Mr. Holmes, what do you think? I believe our friend is right. Thank you, hmm? sir. I'm sure your presence will help convince this man, and you must remember what's at stake. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, my collection, uh, the Holy Grail. Y yes, of, of course. I shall do it. That's the spirit. I'll call tomorrow and see you off on the train. Tomorrow is the day of reckoning, and the reckoning will be a damned fine one. Good day to you, gentlemen. Good day to one and all. An energetic race, the Americans. Yes. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Saunders. Your employer is going to be a very rich man. So you said, sir. Very rich. 
Who knows? Perhaps you may share in the good fortune. In dollars, I believe. That's right. It's a strong currency. Welcome everywhere. I'm sure it is. Yes, indeed, Mrs. Saunders. Welcome everywhere. <laughs> <sighs> That's better. Nothing like a cup of tea for restoring balance to an unsteady world. <laughs> Holmes prefers coffee for the stimulation. Oh, I need none of that. <laughs> you know, it is an extraordinary collection you have here. I wish I could look it over sometime. Well, I would show you now, No, but, no, um... no, now you must rest. Yes, it's just that odd pockets of knowledge have a habit of coming in useful. Hey, what? Hmm? Oh, yes, undoubtedly. I wonder, perhaps hmm? tomorrow, when you're away, I could look in then. You would be most welcome, most welcome, Mr. Holmes. Great honour. Ah, you're sure it's not a... No, not at all. Oh. Uh, now, let me see, it's Mrs. Saunders' half day tomorrow, but I have an extra key somewhere. Ah, now, where is it? Where, 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 where? Ah, great honour. Ah, ah, yes, I I it's hanging on that nail over there, Mr. Holmes, hmm? by the bees. Oh, yes, mm. the bees. Mm. <laughs> they shall be my first port of call. Are you sure you don't mind? Not at all. Uh, what about you, Dr. Watson? Are you an interested party? Oh, wherever Holmes goes, you generally find me, tagging <laughs> along. And now we really must be going and not tax you further. Oh, by the way, hmm? who is your house agent? Holloway and Steele in the Edgware Road, but why? Architecture is another passion of mine. I was wondering, is this house Queen Anne? Or Georgian? Georgian, beyond doubt. Really? Yeah. Well, I should have thought a little earlier. Hmm. No. <laughs> Come, Watson, time to tag along. Mm. Thank you for the tea, sir. Oh, it is I who must thank you. Mr. Holmes, I'm so grateful. So, well, thank you so very much for your help in this matter. Well, up to this moment, I've been very little help at all, Mr. Garadeb. Up to this moment. Mrs. Hudson has surpassed herself. I would describe her cooking as honest. <laughs> and what could be more honest than steak and kidney pie? Mm. Nothing like home cooking. Indeed. If you'd be so good as to pass me the matches, Watson. Mm, gladly. Cigar for me, I think. Yes. Uh, by the way, hmm? did you notice anything curious about that advertisement of Howard Garadab? Yes. The word plough was misspelt. P-L-O-W. Mm, you improve all the time, Watson. Well, there's much to improve, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, P-L-O-W. Bad English, but good American. Mm. Uh, the word buckboard's American also. Ah, right. And artesian wells. Surely more common with them than us. Exactly. It's a typical American advertisement purporting to come from an English firm. So, what do you make of that? Our lawyer friend must have put it in himself. In order to lure our good old fossil up to Birmingham. Mm, on a wild goose chase, poor fellow. Yes. I wondered to tell him, but uh, thought it better to clear the stage by letting him go. But why? Why take all this trouble? You remember the case of the Red-Headed League? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. of course. Something of the same ilk, perhaps. Mm, while the cat's away. Mm. Mm. I'll visit the house agent in the morning and... Then I have another little errand. I, too, have some business to attend. Oh, of course, Watson, of course. Yes, you have your own path to follow. And now and again, I believe it may be allowed. <laughs> Though the mind delights in its own solitude and revels in its lonely pursuits, yet perhaps there may be a little more to life than that. Only a little? Mm, perhaps. Friendship, always close to hand. My pipe and my watch. Mm. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> I shall try never to be too far away. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Mr. Gary Deb moved into the house approximately five years ago. A model tenant, I am bound to say. And before that? Before that. Uh, it had been let for a year. A previous tenant, a Mr. Waldron. Oh, yes, that fellow. 
Well, obviously he made an impression on you. Yes, not necessarily of the best kind. I never felt comfortable in his presence. Why? A sense of uh, violence emanating from him. <laughs> Did he give notice? No. Strange that. One morning he had just vanished. Yeah, I may be maligning the man, Mr. Holmes. He paid promptly enough. Crisp new pound notes in advance. One cannot argue with good money. And yet is not money the root of all evil? Ah, the love of money is the root of all evil, Mr. Holmes. Oh, of course, I stand corrected. And where would we be without love, Mr. Holloway? In all its various forms. This is very popular, sir. Is it really? Hmm. Very popular. Yes, I'm sure. Quality, sir. Quality is so very important. Don't you agree? Oh, yes, undoubtedly. Here, let me show you. Thank you. Thank you very much. There it is. Isn't it pretty? And the way it catches the light, see? Elegant, too. Elegance is also important. Yes, elegance. <clears throat> How much would that be? A mere 20 pounds, sir. 20? Well, it's a once-in-a-lifetime buy. Not necessarily. Oh, I see. You make a habit of it, sir. Uh, no, 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 not at all. I, uh, um, <clears throat> right, I'll take it. Thank you. I'll just find it a little box. Please do. Didn't I see you last night? Beg pardon? In the park, with a young man chasing hats. Oh. Uh, oh, no. You couldn't. I mean, not me. I don't wear hats. Don't you? No. Must have been your sister. I don't have a sister. Oh, that's a pity. No hat, no sister. I'll go and get your bill, sir. Oh, it was you all right, my girl. And I don't know about the quality, but there was precious little elegance involved. <laughs> no. Will you be requiring any more files, Mr. Holmes? Ah, uh, no, thank you. These are quite enough to be going on with. Inspector Lestrade apologises for not being able to deal with you personally. He supplied the permission. That is sufficient. He has a big case on his hands at the moment. Uh, uh, yes, the Belgravia robberies. Yes. Oh, you know about them, sir? <laughs> One reads the papers. Inspector Lestrade reckons it must be an international gang. Does he really? Mm. Oh, we think we've got the matter in hand. Yes, I'm sure you have. Aha! What is it, sir? Yes, this chubby little face here rings a bell in my memory. Shall I pass word to the inspector, sir? As of yet, there's nothing to tell as of yet, but I may have something for him shortly. Hmm, this is more serious than I thought. Much more serious, Watson. There he was, where he belonged, at Scotland Yard in the Rogues Gallery, staring up at me in all his dubious glory, our American friend, James Winter, alias Warcroft, alias... Killer Evans. Watson, are you listening? No, oh, yes, yes, of course. Sorry, wool gathering. Well, I'll gather it some other time. These are his facts. Killer Evans, aged 46, native of Chicago, got into trouble in the States and escaped the penitentiary through political influence. Arrived London, 1893, killed a man over cards in a nightclub in the Waterloo Road. Dead man identified as Roger Prescott, a famous or infamous coiner and forger. There was a, a degree of self-defence involved, so Evans got off comparatively lightly. He was released from prison last year. Not a man to meet in the dark. Carries arms, knows how to use them. But what's his game? Well, according to the house agent, the previous lodger to Nathan Garadeb was a certain Mr Waldron, a tall, bearded man with dark features. The description fits that of Prescott exactly. When he died, the so-called Waldron vanished. Same man. Must be. Who used to live in the very room which our innocent old fossil devotes to his collection. At last. We have a link, you see. Mm. And the next link? We must go now and look for that. I'd better bring your revolver, Watson. I shall take my uh, old favourite here. In case our Wild West friend lives up to his nickname, hmm? Well, according to his records, he's already killed four men. I have no wish for you and I to bring up the round half dozen. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. Uh, watch out, mister. I stopped for nothing round our way. Mm. What? Why? It's a rough old area. Oh. Stand still round here and end up with your throat cut and an empty purse. I've been... I've been walking for hours. Yeah, look it. 
I, I, I'm searching for a man uh, with farm machinery, a uh, uh, Mr. Howard Garideb. Garideb? Mm. Is that a joke name or something? Uh, <laughs> uh, there was an old tramp stayed for a few years. Maybe it was him, eh? No, it, it's not possible. He, he must be here. Mister, I've lived roundabouts for nine and twenty years. There's no such person. And I would advise you how to get out of here while you're still in the one piece. But, oh, what a pity. What a dreadful, dreadful pity. It can't be. It can't be true. Well, suit yourself. None so blind as them that don't want to see. It can't be. No, no, no. I won't let it be. Uh, I, I won't. You see... I'll find him! I'll find him! Twenty pounds. What? Oh, nothing, nothing. <clears throat> nothing at all, Holmes. You're in a world of your own these days. My stomach's in a world of his own, I know that. <sighs> we should have had lunch. There was no time. Besides... <laughs> Hunger sharpens the senses. Mm, does it really? <clears throat> How much longer do you think? Oh, not long, not long. Mr. Evans is not noted for his patient ways. <clears throat> I wish all those skulls weren't looking in this direction. <laughs> the vanishing nature of flesh, Watson. An unavoidable conclusion to life's little journey. The canker in the blossom. Even the prettiest woman under her rosy cheeks. The skull is merely waiting to be revealed. Shh, shh, shh. Yes, I thought that front lock would last long against a man of his abilities. The reckoning approaches, Watson. Just dandy. Huh? Two pistols pointing at your head, Mr. Evans. As you Americans would put it, if one don't get you, then the other one will. Okay. Right. Guess you call the two, Mr. Holmes. Play me for a sucker from the first, I bet. <laughs> well, I hand it to you, sir. You had me beat fair and square. Oh, my God, you treacherous... Watson, you're not hurt. For God's sake, say you're not hurt. Oh, almost worth it. What? The pain. See that look on your face. A great heart, as well as a great mind. Nonsense. I was merely worried about the surgeon's bills. <laughs> here, here. Oh. Let, let me look. Oh, no, no, it's nothing, Holmes. I should know. It's, a, it's just a scratch. Oh. Uh, did you shoot the fella? No. The second shot was his also, but I laid my revolver along the side of his head. <laughs> Wild West, indeed. <laughs> Watson, you are certain? Dead, oh, it's just a scratch, Holmes, honestly. Very well. Oh. I'll take that revolver, my friend. <clears throat> but, oh. Lord, it's as well for you. If you had killed Watson, you would not have left this room alive. Oh. No. <laughs> What have you to say for yourself? Oh. Say, what did you hit me with? Justice. <laughs> There's a lot of money in this room, Mr. Holmes. Yes. All forged. You bet. Greatest counterfeiter London ever saw. <laughs> that their printing press, that's Prescott's machine. And those bundles on it are 2,000 of his notes. Each one print marked 100 pounds. Fit to pass anywhere. Help yourselves, gentlemen. Let me walk out of here, and I guarantee not to look back. <laughs> Doesn't lack for nerve, does he, Holmes? He has nerve enough to kill a man, that is certain. You shot Prescott, did you not? Surely did. 
Though he pulled first on me, he never could hold his drink. No man could ever tell a Prescott note from a Bank of England. We were in it together. About to flood these little beauties all over London, and then... Well, I got five years, and when I get out, I find this crazy boob of a bug hunter squatting right on top of 200,000 pounds. And I'm moving. And I'm moving an inch. So, you wove this fairy tale around his peculiar name. I had to shift him somehow. Could have put him away, I suppose, but I guess I'm just a soft-hearted guy. Go ahead. Like a little lamb. Say, <laughs> what harm have I done anyway? I haven't used the press, not hurt the old stiff, not touched the money. <laughs> Where do you get me? Only attempted murder. Nothing too serious. Careful, Holmes. As a physician, you make a very good detective. This is more than a scratch, Watson. Just keep still. <coughs> Any stiller and I shall be dead. Perhaps I might finish the dressing and you... Ouch! Retire and observe from a distance. Oh. Hmm. Very well. Now, easy does it. Well, can I do nothing? You may fetch me a cigar from my pocket. I rather think I've earned it. Oh, yes, I would agree with that. There you are. All shipshape and Bristol fashion. Mm, can't find... Uh, well, there's this. But it's, it's rather a small box for cigars. Oh, oh, oh that, yes. Uh, yes, I forgot. Uh, I meant to tell you... Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me what? About the box. <clears throat> oh, well, I'm sure it's no concern of mine. What's in fact it goes? Unless, perhaps, it contains some exotic, deadly poison. <laughs> oh, yes, here we are. One cigar. Uh, thank you. <sighs> Excellent. I'm sure. <clears throat> well, yes. The box. Yes? It contains an engagement ring. I see. I intend to become engaged. I assume that would be the object of the purchase. <clears throat> so, and who is the lucky lady? Jean Chisholm. I mentioned her to you before. The young woman I met when I was... Well, not so young, really, but... Doctor's daughter. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, the doctor's daughter. Keep it in the profession, as it were. Uh, I didn't mean to tell you... Before. Hmm. And I assume that having leapt the chasm of engagement, you will then hurtle towards the doom of matrimony. Oh, really, Holmes? Shake the dust of Baker Street from your shoes? No, not for a while. And leave me once more in perfect solitude. Uh, not perfect. I'll be popping back and time again to make a nuisance of myself. That, Watson, you will never be. <laughs> Hello. Ah, oh, Inspector Lestrade. I trust that you and the CID are properly grateful that Watson and I have saved you from a veritable plague of forgeries. Oh, indeed you walk. Now, how, uh, how goes the Belgravia case? What? But why? Good Lord. How... Thank you, Inspector. What is it, Holmes? A twist in the tail, Watson. A twist in the tail. How... how unexpected life can be. Yes, indeed. The skull beneath the skin. Your biscuits, leave them be. They are. They're mine. They are not. Now give them back to Mrs. Smith. Give them back right here. I cannot stand these places, Watson. Full of people life has left behind. Uh, they serve a purpose. They must extend senility. Oh, I would cheerfully jump from the cliffs of Dover rather than end up here. Which is his room? Third on the left, the nurse said. Uh, this one. Abandon hope, all ye who enter in. Oh, you mustn't blame yourself, Holmes. Had I not encouraged him for my own ends to go on that journey, he would not be here. 
Well, no point in delaying further. Mrs. Saunders, I didn't expect... I came up by the early train. The service is tolerable. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So, uh, how is the patient? He comes back to us now and again, but the doctors say his condition will not improve. In fact, the opposite. I see. Always had a fragile side to him, Mr. Garideb. Yes, just like one of his precious eggshells. When he came back from Birmingham empty-handed, found the police all over the place and the whole story to be nothing but a forgery, his mind just went under. I regret it. Bitterly. He lived too much on his own, like me. It's not healthy solitude. Well, goodbye, gentlemen. There's silver to clean and carpets to sweep. Life, as they say, must go on. Yes, as they say. Goodbye, Mrs. Saunders. Goodbye. Mr. Holmes, is that you? Have you found him? Have you found him, uh, Holmes? Who? The third garage, of course. Have you found him? No. Were you... Not yet. <laughs> you, you must... Uh, uh, I know you will. Won't he, Dr. Watson? If anyone can, Holmes will. The cupboard over there, Mr. Holmes. Quickly, open. Ah... The bee collection. <laughs> Had Mrs. Saunders bring them. She didn't want to. For you, a present. Thank you. It's been such a help. You must find him, Holmes. Bombus or Pines, the third Garrett Depp. Swear to me. I swear. If he exists, I shall find him. Oh, splendid, splendid stuff. And yet, there was a pity. Somewhere, some kind of dreadful... Dreadful pity. <laughs> what was that, I wonder? I'm afraid I... I don't know. But you must... must know everything. <laughs> oh. Poor fellow. So far down that road, I doubt if he'll ever find his way back. Yes, fate plays his little tricks on all of us. And then stand sniggering in the corner like a schoolboy. Oh, well. Perhaps the country air. Bombus Alpinus, eh? Perhaps I should retire after all, Watson. Become a keeper of bees. I doubt it. And why not, Brett? Bees are too law-abiding, Holmes. You'd die of boredom. <laughs> you may be right, Watson. But on the other hand, who knows what fate has in store for Look, us. Look, Holmes. Hmm? Over there by the rock. What? Oh, yes. Vipera beerus spiras. An adder. Look, oh, there he goes. Yeah. The sun must have brought him out. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Fate. Hmm. To you, Watson, it's like a sniggering schoolboy. To me, it seems. Yes. Like a snake in the grass. In The Three Garridebs, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Merrison and Dr. Watson by Michael Williams, with Lou Hirsch as Killer Evans and James Taylor as Nathan Garrideb. Mrs. Saunders was played by Margaret John, Holloway by Peter Whitman, the Policeman by Paul Panting, Prescott by Gavin Muir, The Shop Assistant by Elaine Claxton, and Mrs. Hudson by Joan Matheson. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The violinist was Leonard Friedman. The Three Garridebs was dramatised for radio by David Ashton and directed by Patrick Rayner. <laughs>